All right, now that we've gathered all of our starter wort into our Erlenmeyer flask, I've enlisted the help of my cohort, Jen, who is also the uh, yeast handling expert and has taught me everything I know about it. So next we're going to open this packet of yeast, which I've just now pulled out of the sanitizer. And I've also sanitized my little um, scissors to open the packet. Once I open the packet, I'm going to pour the yeast into the starter, and then I'm going to immediately hand this off to her, and she's going to take a small culture of yeast from the bottom of the packet and streak it onto this plate. So we need to get her set up with the alcohol lamp. Here's your plate that you're going to use. It is good to have two hands in this process because you want to minimize exposure as much as possible. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to get my funnel set up. I'm going to cut open the packet. I'm going to shake the packet before I cut it. I'm glad I am walking myself through this because I would have forgotten that. It's important to do that so that you get as much uh, yeast aroused from the bottom as you can. And you want to pour carefully so as not to let that little inner pouch fall into the starter. It's not critical, but it's, you don't want it in there, per se. Okay, and then I'm going to promptly remove the funnel and cover this up again. And uh, we'll need to sanitize the stir bar, throw that in there, and then it's good to go on the stir plate. Here we go. Are you all set? Okay. Shake it up. I, I smacked this about 36 hours ago. It has swollen a bit, not as much as I would like. But uh, I got to brew tomorrow, so there's no time to wait. And since I'm pitching it to a starter, it's not as critical that it swells completely. Okay. See what she's doing. She's just basically taking her flamed loop and sticking it right to the bottom of this packet. There's still plenty of yeast in this packet to, uh, to streak a plate. And go ahead and streak the whole plate for this one. Oh boy. Okay, we have a contaminated plate. So, what we're going to try to do is salvage this. So, if you would hold on to this, I'll be right back with another plate. We're back. We had to take a short break because uh, upon streaking the plate, we realized this plate was contaminated. Now, I want to be careful opening this around this area, but I want to show you what a contaminated plate looks like. And I should have checked this before we went through the process, um, but I didn't, so I'm still learning as we go. So I'm going to open this a little closer to the camera and try to avoid any contamination over here. So if you can see this, and I hope I'm getting it, it's just a big fuzzy patch, almost like a cotton ball. So when we were pouring the plate, uh, something got in there, and uh, that's the result. So, you know when you have a, a, a contaminated plate, it's very obvious. So there's no concern um, at this stage after the plates have been poured for several months and stored in refrigeration that the plates themselves are contaminated. At least until you open them up to streak them, in which case you can. There's the possibility of contaminating them. So we're going to give this a second go. Jen is now flaming the loop. We had closed this over as quickly as we could to attempt to um, keep the yeast uh, sterile, not contaminated. And let's see if we can uh, we can pull this off. And while she's preparing that, I'll get the parafilm ready to close off this plate as soon as she streaks it. Again, the, the less time the yeast is exposed to potential contamination, the better. All set? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to close this off and set it at room temperature for a couple of days at least, maybe, uh, maybe a week, until we start to see growth. Once we get nice, healthy growth, then I'm going to go back and take a single colony from this plate, just as we did in a previous uh, episode and streak it into a slant for my long-term storage. Next we're going to take our Rogue Pac-Man plate, we're going to isolate a single colony, and we're going to inoculate a 10 milliliter um, a vial of starter wort to uh, step up to a pitching volume, hopefully by next week. Well, by next week it'll take about six days. I usually let it sit two days in each step. So I've got my Pac-Man ready to go. I'm going to flame my loop. 
I've already loosened the cap on my 10 milliliter vial. Okay, I'm going to uh, take an inoculum. Work over the flame as uh, much as I can without getting too close to the flame. You don't want to kill the yeast on your loop. Okay. Close it off. You don't have to seal it completely. You'll see activity in about 36 hours. It'll start to foam up, and in fact, it will uh, a little bit will spill over. So place it someplace uh, that's easily cleanable. On to the last step with. Uh, which we're going to take the dregs from our La Fin du Monde and pour it into 100 milliliters of starter wort and let it uh, let it revitalize if it's still if it's still uh, viable and uh, have a, a a yeast culture that we can then streak to a plate and a slant and have the yeast that is used in La Fin du Monde. I've read and I'm not sure on this, and it seems that most people that have mentioned this aren't sure as well, but it is. It is uh, expected that this yeast is the yeast used in fermentation and not just a bottling yeast. So we're gonna we're gonna give it a go, if for no other reason than to illustrate that it is fairly easy to do a bottle um, uh, to culture yeast from the dregs of a bottle. Okay, so let me throw it on in there, swirl it up as much as I can. I should have flamed the the, the, the lip of this bottle, but unfortunately I'm running out of tape and uh, I'm. Being Finish this quickly. So uh, that was an error on my part. You should flame the lip. That's exactly why I have the uh, the flame still burning. I didn't. So uh, I'm sloppy. I'm sorry. But uh, know that you should flame this before you before you before you uh, pitch the yeast in the ear. So that's all I have for you. Hopefully you enjoy this. And if, um, if there's anything else you can think of that you'd like to see, uh, shoot me a, an email or leave a comment on YouTube and um, we'll see if we can do it. Otherwise, I think we've covered just about everything. So, cheers.